with me, your man, Louis T. Welcome to the 2019 NFL Coaching Carousel here on the Louis T. Network. Of course, I'm your set man, Louis T. Thank you for joining me. We started out this process with eight NFL teams needing new head coaches, a quarter of the league, if you can believe that. We're down to just three teams now looking for a head coach as five have found their next head man in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Arizona Cardinals, Denver Broncos, Cleveland Browns, and the next team we're going to talk about in the Green Bay Packers who have hired ex-Titans, ex-Rams offensive coordinator Matt LaFleur, who last year was the offensive coordinator and play caller for the first time in his career in Tennessee with the Titans. I talked about on my podcast down below, you can see it, the Louis T Network podcast. Make sure you start checking that out. Great podcast, a lot of great information, a lot of fun. Check it out. But uh, I talked about Matt LaFleur as a guy that um, I'm very familiar with, so I'll be able to give you a little bit of an insight as to what to expect from Matt LaFleur, some pros and some cons and what he'll bring to the table. But um, I didn't think he was ready to be a head coach. I said that on my podcast that I thought maybe one more year. And again, I, I also talked about, so in the same breath, um, I kind of contradicted myself because I said, you got to think outside the box when hiring a, a coordinator uh, or excuse me, a head coach. But he went through the process in in the same way that you traditionally see coaches get hired. You start out as a quarterback's coach or you start out in quality control. Then you become a, a positional coach. Then you get bumped up and elevated to coordinator and then you get a job. And that's essentially what Matt LaFleur did. He worked his way up through the ranks. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. But he only was a coordinator for one year. So he's only a play caller really for one year. He was a coordinator for two years, uh, excuse me, but he was only a play caller for one in Tennessee. He didn't call the plays in LA under Sean McVay. McVay was calling the plays. So he didn't really call plays except for the one year in Tennessee. So you're not really sure about this guy's uh, play calling style. And, and so there are questions about that. That's why I wanted to see one more year of this guy as a coordinator before giving him a job. But again, you know how it is. Everyone's looking for the next Sean McVay. Everyone's looking for the next Matt Nagy. So everyone's looking for that young 39-year-old coach as they've gotten here in Matt LaFleur, a guy that's up and coming that you're trying to get ahead of the curve. You don't want to be the team that's a step behind or you're just catching up. You want to be out in front of this thing, and the Packers are trying to do that. And so uh, they, they needed to be a breath of fresh air in Green Bay, I think. And they're hoping that the relationship between Rodgers and LaFleur looks like the picture and not like the one Rodgers had with Mike McCarthy. And so uh, you're hoping that this is a match made in heaven because, as the pitcher says, the future is now in Green Bay. You don't have time to try to figure things out on the fly. You don't have time to try to, you know, work towards the future. Aaron Rodgers is an older quarterback. Now, by NFL standards, he's older as a quarterback. But by playing time, he's not that old because he sat behind um, uh, Brett Favre for so many years but with all the injuries he's incurred through his careers whether you're talking concussions like the one he sustained in the very last game of the season or you're talking about the numerous surgeries he's had uh, on situations where he's broken something or torn something you know that this league stands for not for long and Aaron Rodgers we don't know how much much uh, longer he's going to play in this league so you got to win now and there's no excuse for the best player that we've possibly seen at the quarterback position at least in my generation in my lifetime the best quarterback I've ever seen to only have one Super Bowl championship to only have been to one Super Bowl I need to see Aaron Rodgers win at least one more chip before he's done and maybe Matt LaFleur is the guy to get you there I don't know we will see let's talk about the pros and the cons and what I've seen from Matt LaFleur in his time in Washington and, and what he'll bring to the table so Matt LaFleur is a disciple of Mike Shanahan. That's why I'm familiar with him, me being a Washington Redskins fan. Mike Shanahan was in Washington from 2010 to 2013. So was Matt LaFleur, who was brought on by Mike Shanahan. So he's a disciple of Mike Shanahan. What does that mean? He's going to run in a zone run blocking scheme. So what that means is that you're going to have your offensive linemen blocking in a zone run blocking scheme. So they're going to block out towards the edge. They're going to block a, a specific area they're not blocking a specific guy and that's going to create cutback lanes for your running backs so you need good one cut and go running backs guys that can see holes set up can press the the, the line press a hole and then st uh, stuck stick their foot in the ground cut back 
and get up the field. And that's what you're looking for in, in the uh, case of a running back. You've got a number of guys on your football team at this very moment that can do that exact thing. I like both of your backs that you have on your team. So I think they're both capable of doing what you need in a zone run blocking scheme. But what that also is going to do is something that you haven't really seen out of Aaron Rodgers of late. And that's the uh, uh, a very explosive and dynamic play action uh, game and, and shots down the field. If you look at Sean McVay's offense, Sean McVay and the Rams take shots down the field. But their play action uh, fakes are, are for the intermediate shots. They're not looking to get a bunch of... 50 yard bombs over the top you know every now and again they'll take those shots to cooks or cooper cup or whomever um and, uh, woods but for the most part their play action fake is to get the the 18 yard dig or a 20 yard comeback or they're looking to get a a, a corner route you know they're looking to hit you for chunks nice 20 25 30 yard chunks they're not necessarily looking for the 55 yard home run if it comes they'll take it but they're looking to get you for chunk plays and that's what you're going to see from Matt LaFleur in his offensive play calling like uh, some of the cons what I didn't like from him in Tennessee is that it took him too long and you you notice this with certain teams it's a hard balance and juggling act when you've got two bats like the Packers do now the Packers Feature Aaron Jones is their main back, but they've got another back that I really like that I think is capable of doing some things on their football team as well that I want to see get some carries. And so when you've got two backs that you like, sometimes you find it hard to integrate both of those backs. That was the problem for LaFleur in Tennessee. It was either going to be um, Derrick Henry, who came on like gangbusters late in the season and was the best back on the ground yardage wise and touchdown wise in the league for the final seven games of the season once Lafleur found out what he had in Derrick Henry or there was the scat back out of the backfield and um, it, it was almost like it was one or the other and it wasn't a good mixture of the two in Deion Lewis and so Deion Lewis was extraordinary early in the season for the Titans remember that Monday night game versus the Cowboys Deion Lewis was dominant in that football game against the Patriots Deion Lewis was a big part of that win as well but as the season wore on and Derrick Henry became more of the focal point and Matt LaFleur figured out what he had in Derrick Henry you started to see less and less of uh, of the scat back and so it doesn't need to be one or the other. You got to find a way to get both of those guys involved. Um, I thought he did a really good job with Marcus Mariota in the play calling and, and getting him involved. But um, I think he also did a really good job because of Mariota getting injured and, and Blaine Gabbert having to come in of calling plays for Blaine Gabbert. And those two are totally different quarterbacks. And I thought he did a good job of of integrating uh, Blaine Gabbert in, in some situations where he had to come in mid-game i.e. against the Redskins and so um, I think he did a really good job for the position that he was put in in Tennessee and I just want to see him be able to integrate both backs in Green Bay because I think both of them have skill sets that differ from one another one brings uh, a little bit more uh, power and a little bit more maybe quickness but the other one brings a little bit more speed to the uh, table and a little bit more um, ability to catch it out of the backfield so I just want to see him be able to use both of these backs use all of the weapons in Green Bay and, and look the Packers draft two to three receivers every single year they've got a number of young guys that they drafted last year that I really like and so um, I think you, he's going to find a way to get all those guys involved I want to see him do that as well uh, because the Titans didn't have a bunch of targets to get the football to so that's something else I want to see from Matt LaFleur again He's a disciple of Mike Shanahan, so you get in the zone run blocking scheme. You're going to get a lot of play action off of that, which is going to really enhance your play action ability and taking the football down the field. And I think it's also going to allow Aaron Rodgers to have some of the pressure taken off of him in terms of running the football because in order for the play action fake to work, the run game must be a focal point. And Mike Shanahan, as we all know, Kyle Shanahan, Mike Shanahan, nobody runs it better in this league. And Matt LaFleur is a disciple. And if you look at what he did down the stretch for the Titans with Derrick Henry, nobody ran it better than the Titans in the final six or seven games of the season in terms of having one back carry the load. We know about the Seahawks and what they were doing on the ground. We know about the Ravens and Lamar Jackson being a part of the run game. But if you're talking about one back pounding it and getting Big time yardage. There was no one better in the league in the back half of the season than Derrick Henry. And that was a byproduct of what Matt LaFleur was doing. So look for that to come to Green Bay. Look for a guy that's young 
that you're hoping has had some of Mike Shanahan, Kyle Shanahan, and now Sean McVay rub off on him. And that's what the Packers are hoping for. They're hoping for a great marriage between he and Aaron Rodgers because if this is a match made in heaven, we could see the Packers get back on top in the NFC North division and possibly back to the all-elusive Super Bowl for these Green Bay Packers. This is a very big move for the Packers. They haven't been searching for a coach in quite some time. This is the first guy that's had an opportunity. And if you look at the Packers, they've really done a good job of finding coaches that, is ha that have had longevity with their organization. They're like the Steelers Jr. or the Steelers of the NFC. They don't hire coaches very often because they generally get it right. This is a gamble, a little bit of a gamble, because this is an unproven commodity here, but this is what the league has gone to. Unproven commodities, young offensive minds that you marry with extraordinary quarterbacks and hope that you get extraordinary results. We'll see what happens with Matt LaFleur, the newest hire in Green Bay as their new head coach. All I'm gonna say is that the future is now. LaFleur doesn't have time two or three years to figure this thing out. Aaron Rodgers isn't getting any younger. He needs to hit the ground running, and the Packers are hoping that he hits the ground running similar to the way Sean McVay did in L.A. two years ago, similar to the way Matt Nagy did this past year. They're hoping he hits the ground running, and I said this on my podcast. Of the eight teams looking for new head coaches, at least one of them, we've seen it the last three years, going all the way back to Buffalo with Sean McDermott winning the uh, winning a wild card spot for the Bills who hadn't been to the postseason since 1999, getting them to the playoffs two years ago. Uh, you saw it last year with Sean McVay, and you saw it this past year with, um, with Matt Nagy. Someone's going to turn their fortunes around, and their team is going to make the postseason. So, um, or I think the Bills were two years ago, uh, along with Sean McVay. But someone's going to make the postseason. Someone's going to make the postseason as a first-year head coach. Could it be the Green Bay Packers? They've got the best quarterback to do so. We'll see what happens. I like the hire. I didn't think he was ready, but we'll see what Matt LaFleur has in store for the Green Bay Packers. I'm your man, Louis T, signing off. Remember, if it's not your man, T, it's not the best NFL coverage. It could be. Make sure you subscribe to the Louis T Network if you haven't already done so for more great NFL content. Going to cover the entire uh, playoffs as I've already started to do. Going to cover the entire draft as I always do. And going to cover everything that has anything to do with the National Football League. And make sure you check out the Louis T Network podcast as well. I'm your man, Louis T, signing off. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.